Hello, Crystal from Crystal Clean Solutions, organization Queen. And I have organized today to have a really great chat with Mark Duffus from MD Photography. Mark is joining us uh, prior to heading over to Vegas in the next couple of weeks to do a really big session around connecting with clients. And he was chatting with me and telling me that he has created an amazing system to do that. Uh, so I wanted to introduce you all to Mark. Welcome, Mark. Hey. It's <laughs> in front of my screen. It's very sort of disorientating. I'm in reverse. No, move that way. No, move this way. Gets a bit that way. So tell us about the chat that you're going to do and this amazing system that you've got. Okay. Well, it, it's really, I guess it's one of those things that when people think about photography, they don't, they don't think about sort of the camera, you know, getting a shot and, and everything else but it, a lot of it is what we do when we first meet the client and everything else and the procedure that you know you subconsciously go through you're not actually going to have it you know you do it for long enough you're not going to have a checklist in front of you but it's something that um i probably i, I learned years ago the hard way which the, the boss this is like gonna make 25 years ago the way to learn was to lock you in a room with people you don't know and you have to work it out now, subsequently after that, you sort of work out the whole process and what you should be looking at, how you should be approaching it, and actually doing some research before you you actually meet anybody or talk to anybody or walk in. So you actually know, have a bit of background, but then also knowing the, you know, things like when I did photography, I never thought about looking at personality types. All the different people you're going to meet in you know some people like to be right that's it that's the way let's do it let's move on others like to be warmed up to the process and get around to it and talk through things and and you know just need a lot of coaxing to get it done and so you have to basically understand who you're talking to what they're about number one you know what they're there for but also, you know, understanding the person that's in front of you so that you can get the best out of them. Now, looking at all that stuff, it was sort of actually, it was my father years ago, and, and this is going back into, um, you yeah, know, showing how old I am. <laughs> um, is, and he's been, now, he's, the guy's actually still producing books and is doing incredibly well. I, I don't know if you, Alan Pease? Oh, yes, yep. Alan P and his Very wife Barbara. Alan, Alan Barbara and Alan. Yeah, they've, they've, now, Alan did all the he did all the talks and everything else. Barbara helped him write yeah. the books. Now I think they've yeah. written like 10, 15 books and sold, I think, 10 million copies. Yeah. Which a lot of it is, and until you sort of hear him speak about it in very plain English without going into psychobabble and everything else, um, it's all about looking at looking at the person, studying the person and basically very quickly um, seeing how they are in the situation when they're face to face to you. A lot of it, I, I, I guess the best comparison, which sort of, you know, to pop culture at the moment is you've got to be the mentalist. Yep. So you, you, you need to see the unseen without them telling you because most people won't tell you how they're feeling, how they react to something, you know, is this making them feel anxious, which everybody seems to be quite anxious about things. And, a lot of people find it very confrontational being in a situation where they have to they're tr entrusting someone to actually get the best of them when they probably don't know what is the best version of them yeah. so and this this is where it's sort of so there's a lot of psychology behind it there's a lot of body language um and i i can't recommend those books highly enough and i think they've they've got a new version that came out two years ago i think but reading that sort of stuff and understanding the person you're in front of but then also having enough you've got to be on top of everything that's going on as well pop culture as in across different fields so that you can pull out information from here there and everywhere to connect to that person because i guess what i do and i did i did there was a job this morning i photographing a guy for um a company he got told he had to get it done and this is a normal situation and basically he walks in, he's in his uniform and everything else. You got, I've got five minutes to basically make him feel relaxed because there's lights all around him, pointed at it, and he know he's got to get this done and he's got to get to work back to the office. So within, I think within about five minutes, um, 
I found out he's from Macedonia. His wife's been over here three years. He's been over here 15 years. They got a 10 week old. She's on uh, maternity leave till October. They're going to back home to visit the parents in in July. And by then, he, you know, he's giving out all this information. You, I'm giving a little bit of me as well, talking about where I am, who I am, and everything else. But it is understanding that that um, give and take between the client and understanding who they are and what makes them feel at ease. Now, obviously, once you tag onto the person that they've got a 10-week-old at home, that is consuming their life at the moment. And yeah. then he talked about the bags under his eyes and everything else and things that were making him um, anxious or maybe a little bit wary about the photograph and how he's going to look and everything else. Now, I sent the photos through before and he's absolutely thrilled with them, which is pretty good because I didn't really do much to them in retouching. So. <laughs> That's what you want. But, yeah, but it, but it is that whole um, getting, getting to know people and finding out their story. Okay. And, with my one of my biggest challenges was, and this is why I, I'm not having trouble talking about it, is my challenge is to actually shut up and listen. <laughs> and, and which is the, the the big foundation of any relationship is to you learn as you get older to there are times when you've just got to shut up and just listen and actually listen. Mm -hmm. So it, it's so it's a system of basically research knowledge understanding the whole psychology of the person and how they react to situations and and understanding that that as a photographer i'm putting them into what and i think ironically these days with selfies and everything else um and because it, it's not what i'm doing isn't restricted to young and old both react the same way which i find quite fascinating because you'd think that the younger they were with selfies and everything else they're like used to it Yep. But they're seeing that screen in front of them getting immediate feedback. And if they don't get that immediate feedback with me pointing a camera at them, suddenly they worry about it. Okay. We all worry about how we look. Yes. Me. And so during the sessions, do you show them what's coming up on the camera? No. Why not? Well, I do at the end. Yeah. Not basically, I'm, I've got to get to a point with what I'm doing that they feel comfortable to trust me. So basically it, it's all about, a lot of the communication is all about developing that trust. So I have to, if I'm asking them questions, they're giving me information, I have to give back. So there has to, there's a balance between, you know, it's not just all one sided, they're just, just asking questions and they're spewing information. You've got yeah. to give a little bit of yourself as well and, and try and find that common ground with each other, which, um, you know, Sometimes it's, I grew up in Melbourne, they grew up in Melbourne, or um, with a lot of clients, it's what they do on the weekend, hobbies, um, married life. We've all got stories about married life. It's, it's a very common ground. But the big one that always connects, and this is, that, although it's, it's, quite, it's quite strange, in Melbourne and Brisbane, children are a big connector. Okay. In Sydney, it's where they go on holidays because they... Sydney, a lot of people there haven't had time for kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, it, it's it, it's finding that common ground of which to basically you find that little chink that you're going to connect to them and they get you and you get them. So yeah. it, basically it, it's a system of understanding um, the body language, what they're saying, what it really means, reading in between the lines, so that you can find the common ground that makes them feel at home, relaxed, and really on board with, I trust you to basically get the best of me. Okay. And then we throw in a few, obviously, jokes. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. <laughs> and, uh, so, yeah. So would you say right. that creating that common ground then allows them to be more comfortable and relaxed oh definitely it, it basically before before they walk into the they don't know who the hell i am yeah they don't know they know why i'm there and it's for something they don't really like because everybody hates you know how they look get that light on. um <laughs> so that they're put in a situation that is they don't like it's foreign to them 
they don't know what I'm going to do. And a lot of people have, um, and for some, I, I don't know, a lot of people's most common reference if they're in their mid thirties is wedding photography, um, which seems to be such a long day. Mm -hmm. and they never have that, oh my God, thank God it was over. Yeah. So, so the best reaction I've had, and there's a whole series that I did with a accounting firm where basically we spent an hour with each person photographing them in two different setups, one sitting, one standing. Yeah. Just chatted to them and spoke to them. Now, initially, when you when you say that concept to an account in a firm, an accountant or somebody working in a firm where there's three to five hundred employees, they they look at the the person who works for the firm and say, "Why? <laughs> what? What the? Why? Why is it? Why is it take so long? Just come and get a photo. What the? Yeah. But after the process, because we sat 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 them down and chatted them, found out who they were what they did, family, they didn't, family, where they come from, sometimes what they're working on, sometimes stuff you didn't want to hear either. Um, some people share a little bit too much, which is fine. Um, but when they left, they didn't have that same, it wasn't, oh, my God, thank, it's, thank God it's over. It was, no, that's great. That's cool. I'll, I'll look forward to seeing the shots. So it's sort of they have that, they understand the process once they've been through it. Yeah. So my biggest challenge is understanding that, yes, photography is taking a photograph, but because you don't do it very often with that person, I, I need that. I've got to have that, try and develop that lead time to connect with them, to yeah. basically develop a rapport with that person, which which is, and, and this is where I, I look into the whole, you know, the body language, you can see how people, the way they dress, what they wear, how they're holding. The biggest giveaway is when people squeeze, they put their hands down low and they're squeezing two fingers. Uh-huh. It's like the biggest. Set of wiggling uh, their toes and jumping up and down. <laughs> no, no, they don't. Well, and, well, actually, no, no, it doesn't really happen. Not all of those. It's just the way they, they sit and they hold themselves. Yeah. And it's really... It, Sometimes the body language is just like, yeah, this isn't going well. And you can see why. And I quite often bring it to their attention. And once they become aware of what they're doing, they're quite fine about it. And it, it's a very, anxiety is such a subconscious thing that most people don't understand that they're actually doing it. Yep. And once they know, they're like, oh, God. It's like when you subconsciously twitch or you've got something and you flick it or clicking a pen oh my god that used to be the big annoyance but once it's brought to light you fight to do it all the time yeah, so okay. a lot of it is and it, it's sort of that they um one of the funniest things that people always say and it's always about clothes is so like what should i wear during a, a photo shoot well what yeah what should i wear yeah but then they come out and say should I wear the jacket or should I wear, is it, is it just jacket or is it, do I, do I wear one or the other? And it's like, oh, is it, and as soon as they start talking about it, it's like, you realize that either, yes, you should wear the jacket. If you're asking, you should wear the jacket because yeah. you're asking that because you want to wear the jacket and yeah. they're being polite and asking it. And it's sort of, and there are, and then there are the obvious ones of trying to explain that maybe what they're wearing is not going to come across as well. And because people are always very, some people are totally oblivious to it. Other people are super anxious about it. And this is where it's that seeing the signs of how they're feeling and, you know, trying to either tap into them, reinforce that it's all okay, or basically offer the answers that they want. And then of course, there's that, the wonderful personality type who, um, there was a, a um, Queen Brisbane, Broncos football player who was the personality type where, right, let's do it. I'm here. Good. Get it. Good. And that was it. And he would literally, he would know basically, right, you're taking the photo now. He'd switch the expression on and then, right, done. 
and he walk off. And if I, if you asked for too many shots, it was basic. No, you got it. Just move on. But that that was the person who basically understood what he had to do, knew what he wanted, would come in and just do it. Yeah. And basically, he'd already. Done, he's one of those people who does the research, works out what he, how he looks, and everything else. And th and this is how models, well, actually, good models do. Like the re the reason people like model shoots and like you're doing an advertising shoot, a model comes in, they know their body, they know their looks. It sounds vain. They stand in front of a mirror. They, they work it all out. Yeah. Most people haven't got it worked out. Yeah, and the general person getting a photo shoot for their business profile or, you know, whatever it happens to be, wouldn't be doing those types of things either, so. No. Yeah. Well, no, because I don't think we, because if you're, you're passionate about your business, a lot of people really aren't worried about how they're looking and everything else, but, and, and this is where quite often um, brand looks and things like that, your personal brand and who you are can be so important, mm. especially in a photograph. Video is really good because basically like this, we're here talking 10, 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, then that's it, it's gone. It, it's a moving element, so it's always a photograph. And I, I guess this is where um, we look at so many aspects and with posing and things like that and how to tilt heads and expressions and how to achieve the expression through me either breathing or saying something or um, getting the stance right because the photograph is there forever mm -hmm. which is even more so now with what's the song the web it's on the web yeah it's always an interesting thing to uh google yourself <laughs> find out what comes up yeah, I know. Mostly mine are good. Yeah. You... But yeah, and, and and this is where I I guess sort of the the skill of anybody, and realistically, a lot of these things about getting customer connection relate to anybody in business. So that's what I was about to just ask: is taking these seven steps that you've run us through, how you very much obviously made them specific for. Um, the photography industry and, and connecting with your client behind a camera. How do those steps transfer into everyday business and dealing with clients as a whole? Well, it's the whole meeting, networking. Um, under, I mean, literally that understanding who you're talking to when you're doing, uh, when you're meeting someone to either get work or, you know, they're coming to meet you to get to use you as well. Yep. You've got to grasp who this person is to know how to negotiate with them, how to talk, whether there's someone who really wants to go through and talk through everything and over and over again, or they basically just want to, this is how it is, this is how it goes, blah, 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 dun, dun, like it, good. Yeah. Some people like that, some people don't. Interestingly, I had a, an example yesterday on, um, I was on public transport over listening to a lady sitting beside me on her phone talking to a salesperson and she was sold she was whatever she was buying it was done she was like yep give it to me but the salesperson on the other end of the phone had a script and wanted to keep pointing out the the pros and the cons and you know all of these extra things and it literally got to the point where the woman actually said you've now oversold it i'm actually not interested anymore so thanks for the chat and didn't buy her product purely because she had totally misread the situation and not heard that the client was ready to buy and just taken a credit card to his sales. Yeah, and, and, and lost a sale. And and this is the this is the I mean I have um my phone skills have taken quite a long time to get better. There's still a work in progress. Yep. Meeting face to face is so much easier because yep. you can read the person. You can read all their their behavioural cues and the way they're standing, yeah. and yeah. Because if they're on a telephone, you're sort of trying to hear the intonation in their voice. You've got to listen for di different things, and you've really got to listen to what they're saying, and that, and not just think about what you've got to say. I mean, you got to think about what's what you're saying next, but really listen to 
the direction they're giving you, especially if you're trying to get work from them. Yeah. Because this is, and it is one of those things that, um, and I, I think this is this is basically the the fear factor as well is that without understanding these, a lot of people are fearful of um, connecting with people in business and networking because they pro well they don't really have the skills of understanding the person in front of them and they're frightened of how to walk up to someone and start talking to them yep. which i think which i think is i think everybody has that greatest fear you're in a big room of people and you don't know who el hell anybody is but if you you see how they act how they stand what they're talking about and try and look for that pick up that common ground where you can come in and say something it gives you that edge. But if you don't have those skills, you'll never break through in business. And I think this is one of the biggest things that holds a lot of people back in, in growing their business and talking to people. Yeah, it's a, a common thing. I've, and I've, it's on the screen where you, you listen to hear, not listen to respond. Um, because we're so ingrained in, especially in business, uh, we're so ingrained to solve problems. That's the whole point of us being in business. We're solving someone's problem in some way, shape or form. And so quite often we forget that when we're listening to an, a new prospective client that we're not ready to solve their problem yet. We're just listening to hear what their problem is um, and then respond accordingly. And that's the, the part that's being missed. Yeah. And, and this is sort of, um, I mean, this, this is where there's another, uh, there's a client I have where we now at the point where, um, and I, I photograph skylights, which are windows in a roof. Yeah. And like, I know everyone goes, well, it's not hard. It's just photograph a window. And, you know, it's light coming through. It's a big glass thing in the roof. Um, but like anything, so we have to build a story around a window in the roof. Okay. And this one coming up, which so basically a lot of these a lot of these case studies come up where um, they say, "Hey, look, they've discovered a site where they put in fifty of these. They didn't know they'd done it. They want to do a case study. What do you think?" And so you end up looking, and this is where it goes the reverse, where I actually look at a photograph that they the client sent her on their phone or whatever, and I actually build a story around it, trying to interpret what I think they will want to hear and the purpose they want so yes. I, it's now you because i've got that understanding with who they are and what their needs are and and the type of things they're looking at that i can actually take something and build a story and put a uh, a direction on the way it goes to just about anything you look at something some aspect to pull it out and basically tap onto that and I mean that yeah. that's the essence of any advertising or marketing thing these days and so goals. do you think that um in business if you then niche your clients so for example let's use photography um if you are a baby photographer or a wedding photographer then that allows you to um you know have already done the research to a degree and know your clients better than if you were just trying to do babies and wedding and business and whatever else yeah well definitely um although the biggest trap with that like anything is you start to presume things yeah okay you, start, you stereotype the people are coming in or why they get you start to build stories that aren't there for people saying this is the reason you're getting the photos when maybe it's not yep and that is and i suffer from that as well i've had clients that i've been working since 1997 and I, it basically went it was great for the first 10 years and then it sort of fell away and now i've had to rebuild the whole the reason why i would like to work for them how i can help them and i've yep. had to listen to the direction they've gone and why they've gone there and basically try and make myself relevant again because I got complacent with what I thought they wanted and what they thought their story was. And yeah, I didn't listen as good as I should have. Yep. And that, that's that, that core, listen to hear. Yes. 
So it's very, um, and that, see, this is where if my wife is listening to this, I'm just going to get myself in trouble. <laughs> You're going to come back to, you, are you listening to hear me? <laughs> yeah, you just didn't. Did you hear what I said? That we talked about this the other day. Did you, have you done that? <laughs> okay. yeah. Well, there's lots of people that can uh, relate to that. <laughs> I know. And, and I, I guess, and this is where it's, um, I, I think with new clients, we're always very switched on. We're always very attentive. We're very focused. We're always on. We walk into the room. We're there. We're happening. What, what's going on? What's doing? Yep. The longer that goes on for the relationship, the more you, yeah, yeah, it's like last time. That's cool. Yeah, okay. And yeah, so, you do. But, and I think this is one of the one of the things that's changed in the last 10 years with a lot of this um, uh, body language um, and the psychology and the personality type. I mean, you know, in the last 10 years, stress, the word stress has gone to anxiety. Mm -hmm. And although the depth of anxiety that people feel is, a bit frightening um, from, you know, what you thought, oh, I was a bit stressed. Oh, it's fine. Relax, have a coffee. Yeah. Or, you know, take a sit down, have a drink. Um, whereas now the anxiety that people feel in situations just connecting with people is, um, and that's where the approach and how you um, talk to people and connect to them and understand their potential anxiety is such a different ball game. The psychology yeah. behind that is just like very um, daunting, um, and this is where I think people are relating, possibly these days. And, and this is where you've got to be aware when you meet face to face. They're they're relating so much to their phones or their computers or a screen that direct contact is quite challenging for people. Yeah, and that's where I mean it's like it's like a little dance. Sometimes you've really got to do a big lead in and make them and that's why with a lot of people it takes a little bit longer yeah because that whole networking contact talking understanding aspect has been buffered in the last five years by i have a relationship with a phone yeah and it's nice to me it talks to me it gives me lots of stuff i don't have to do anything <laughs> and it always gives the response you want <laughs> Exactly, and and this is where in a in a networking or one on one personal situation, they've got to. I think the brain has to switch on and think and be a lot more active in the way you you approach the conversation. And yeah. a lot of people aren't as as good as that, and especially in the probably what are what are they called? what what's a twenty to thirty five. Oh, you're testing my knowledge now. What, what bracket is that? That what's millennial now? Is there something Gen, after millennial? Jen said, "Yeah, they've gone into yeah." They have. Anyway, we're getting Gen off X, topic. X, <laughs> uh, Z. We gone back to A. No, that I think they've gone Z A. Z A. Possibly, I'm not sure. So I haven't looked into that recently. And that's probably the twist on the whole thing in the last you know since I I've, I've been doing photography for thirty years. So the whole twist and the whole thing has been um, generational shifts. Mm -hmm. And I'm 52. <laughs> so relating to people my own age, easy. Yeah. Relating to people half my age, very challenging without being looked as upon as condescending or just being a little douche. Yeah. So... You've got, to, you've got to come in at your age but understand them and give them some knowledge about things that interest them that maybe they haven't even thought about. Yeah. Which for me, that makes that whole depth of knowledge so much more difficult. Yeah. And this is where, Yeah, go okay. on. Well, I was going to say, I think just learning their story helps you to do that because then you can relate and not sound condescending. Well, yeah, and, and I guess, okay, so the flip side of that is finding out about them is so much easier. You just Google them. <laughs> that is true, yes. They're, they're Everything's so on social media people. now. Yeah. yeah. But anyone in their 40s and 50s, you can Google them, but you won't get much info. 
Yeah. But then they're more likely to open up and tell you their story directly. Yes. So, and, and this is what you got, I guess, 20, 20 odd years ago, basically, I used to read the paper every morning mm -hmm. to keep current. Yeah, well, that's pretty much, no, don't, don't do that anymore. <laughs> it is more TV news, it's Facebook, it's Fox, it's um, Sky News, it's BBC News, getting little snippets here and there about what's going on that people are tapping into that you can start off as generalized common ground and then hone it into more what they're interested in. yeah great so to recap there are 11 steps i don't know if you realize that or not but you have 11 steps to your system of uh connecting with clients and that's clients across the board it doesn't matter whether you're in the photography industry or systems processes accounting all of those types of things even hairdressers you really need to do research your client um, I think that's a really good first step. And and you get taught that at school and in university. Research is key. Um, you know, if you're not understanding that before you go in, then you kind of blown your blown it already. Um, and then that leads you to your second step, which is understanding your client. Um, and and also understanding the social awareness of whatever's going on in the world at the moment to allow you to then learn their story. Um, and communicate to develop trust. So that's five steps. Five steps. Where's my camera? Uh, <laughs> well, how, how, many, how many steps did I have? You've got 11. Yeah, so we're up to five. Uh, number that's six good. is then that common ground creating comfortability, um, which brings, um, brings you into the actual kind of um, being with your client and calling them out on their behavior. So, you know, and I, I see this a lot on social media, you know, a lot of posts are my client said X, Y, Z, how should I respond? Well, call them out on it. You know, it, it's okay to say you're being a douchebag right now. Um, you just It's just the way you say it. You know, my yes. mum always said it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Um, and making sure that you are listening to hear and not listening to respond. Um, Niching your target market helps to you to understand your clients better. And with that comes the don't make assumptions. Even if you do know your target market, every single client is completely different. Um, and we know that in systems and processes as well. Every business needs systems and processes and every business essentially runs exactly the same way, but they're all unique. They all need individual systems and processes for their business. Um, so no different to any client in any industry. And then uh, number 11, I think it's probably my, my favorite one. I think we forget about it a lot is treating your clients like new every time um, because otherwise we do get too comfortable. We do make those assumptions and then we will make mistakes as business owners or um, people providing products and services to our clients. So there you go, 11 steps to your system. So I almost made it a 12 step program. Almost. Have you got one more step? <laughs> Have fun. I think that's probably the most important thing. We're so serious in business and um, we forget to have fun and it's okay to have fun with our clients. Although, you well, know, if you're a lawyer maybe. dealing with some serious issues, maybe not so. <laughs> well, that in the relate where you get to the relationship that it is fun and you want you to connect with you can and make a joke. I had uh, one of our clients uh, this week say um, she's in one of our portals and she said, oh, all the employees have disappeared. I was like, my response, great. Does that mean you can go home? <laughs> like, <laughs> no employees means you don't need to be there, right? Uh, but I couldn't have said that to a brand new client that I didn't have that relationship with. Um, no, no. So very important. Well, thank you, Mark, for joining us and uh, teaching us your system to connect with your clients. And um, it really is a great system that can be used across multiple different businesses and industries, not just in photography. So uh, good luck with your chat in Vegas. It's Vegas, baby. <laughs> Hopefully people will still be responsive and listening to you. Um, yes. and we will surely connect again soon. Thank you guys.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See ya.